Otter is easily one of the most discussed men's fashion labels to come from Fashion Week at the moment, getting far more press and social media mentions than their peers. But how have they managed to do this, and do they have the business plan to back it up? Otter was begun in 2016 by Lissy Herabra and Rushimi Botta, with according to their own website, their debut being Rushimi's graduate collection from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts that was Spring Summer 17. However, if you go far back enough on their Instagram, you can actually find their first full collection under the brand was Spring Summer 16. One could assume that perhaps this wasn't included in their opinion of when the brand started because maybe Lissy didn't have as much involvement as she would go on to have. I know the couple were long distance dating at this point, so it's very possible. But interestingly, there are a lot of things in this collection that tie into the branding that Botta, as we know today, would go on to have. Namely, they're tackling difficult topics, with this collection being seemingly based on racism around the Eurocentric fashion world, not considering Caribbean fashion to be fashion, something that they actually bring up again a few years later as important in this interview. Though, this is actually met with a sanguine approach to the topic, which would also go on to be a signifier with humorous titlings of shows, with Spring Summer 16 named NWE, which stands for a word I can't say, with excellence. In general, the collection is very strong visually and clearly caught the attention of the fashion media, even being featured in Elle Belgique as seen here. Clearly, this was the point that Lissy and Rishimi realized that this could really work as a business and began working together very closely on Rishimi's graduate collection, knowing that it would be the beginning of their brand together, officially debuting in Spring Summer 17. As a collection, it was once again seriously themed, this time less humorously, to tell the story of the enemy of terrorism. This was presented with a heavy theming, communicated by including showpieces like helmets to get their point across and express their creativity while heightening more commercially viable pieces, namely the jackets and trousers. We actually discussed in our last video how Luke Burt of Stefan Cook mentioned that men were creatures of habit and it's clearly seen as a consideration with Botta as well, with the subverted basics like this bomber jacket or even this non-stretch t-shirt. Just this time, packaged with this heavy theming to tie the collection together. Spring Summer 17 was a real runaway success, and saw promotion even further than the Royal Academy of Fine Arts could provide after the collection was shown here in the v file show in New York, which would then lead the pair to win the v files award in 2016, something that you've undoubtedly seen online as Young Thug, who was actually on the judging panel that year, corrected this model's outfit on the catwalk. It was a stunt, but it really worked. Because of how divisive this moment was and involved a celebrity behaving discernibly badly, Otto was immediately well known in fashion circles and had a wider reach than anyone expected because of how unexpected this stunt was. They were featured in V-Files magazine, Glam Cult magazine, Life After Football, and even on a pre-scandal Ellen. This collection would also go on to be award-winning, achieving both the Dries Van Noten Award and then a bit later, the H&M Award. But for now, the brand needed to cement themselves foundationally without an explicit stunt. They needed to be built on more than shock factor if they wanted their customer to return each and every season. So, they returned to the sketchpad signatures of collection theming and activism, which would both be the biggest signifiers of a Botta show, coming into their second collection, Spring Summer 18, named Fish or Flight, which, much like its predecessor, tackles a very serious topic for their theming, this time with Saving Our Oceans. They materialized this theming once again with wearable garments that were heightened by eye-catching headwear. Namely, these large plastic inflatable dolphins and clownfish literally just tied to the model's head that I'm assuming are used ironically as obviously plastic waste in the sea is a big problem. Actually, I had hoped that these were found inflatables from the ocean, but I actually couldn't find that as information, so I have to assume that these were manufactured for the brand or purchased, which at least in my opinion doesn't come across as very authentic, but at least it was great for communicating the message. Which from a branding perspective, was an important pivot because this theme has really gone on to stick for the brand from here on out. 
menswear is still heavily product-led. So, by having a strong, wearable product offering heightened by this kind of activism positioning, gives the brand a very important differentiator apart from other menswear brands at their same level. That said, with just two collections that are heavily styled in their repertoire so far, and with the heavy theming differences, the signifiers are a little hard to pinpoint outside of that Botta blue, which in fairness is in almost every single Botta collection even to this date. It just wasn't obviously clearly a theme yet. So that's exactly why when Autumn Winter 18, named Don't Botta, was released, it became an important show to study to understand what the brand stood for amongst the three official seasons. In hindsight, we know that this collection was a continuation of their Save the Seas platform. However, at the time, it wasn't quite as clear. Because the show notes, as far as I'm aware, weren't online, it was unclear if each individual season would have their own theming apart from the others, with Autumn Winter 18, in my opinion, being based on global warming, which could either be its own theme or a continuation of the Save the Oceans theme from the previous season, this time with a focus on the rising oceans and the melting ice caps. Of course, we know that it was about the ocean in hindsight now, but at the time, it would have been nice to have the show notes shared, perhaps on Instagram or just somewhere else. I'm obviously nitpicking, but because activism is their biggest signifier, communication of that is obviously key in order to validate the clothing offering to the consumer. Though, of course, the product also has its own rising themes, namely an oversized fit with lots of hanging fabrics to give movement, and my favourite of their themes, their clothing-inspired clothing, as seen from these trouser trousers in Spring Summer 17, the hat hat from Spring Summer 18, and this tag top from Autumn Winter 18. Furthermore, it's in this Autumn Winter 18 collection that we're met with more of the brand's entry-level products for the first time. Things like these belts, t-shirts and caps, which obviously were used for the hat hat, but have actually gone on to be a staple for the brand, so probably is their main cash cow because of the high margin and the universal appeal with logo caps. By this point, the brand was exceptionally well loved for such a new brand that it came as no surprise that they won the Hear Prize and were nominated for the LVMH Prize both in 2018. So naturally, expectations were running very high for the brand coming into Spring Summer 19, where at least for me, they disappointed. That's a bit of an unfair way to start this, but the Spring Summer 19 show, at least to me, read like a show of their greatest hits bringing back a lot of the pieces that we'd already seen from Spring Summer 18 without developing on those ideas for this show which was funded by Mercedes-Benz. I say unfair of me because there's really two ways to analyse this. One is why they may have done this and the other is how an existing customer may have perceived it. An existing customer who'd followed the brand may be disappointed that we weren't getting served a new topic for Botter to approach. This is more rehashing of old ideas and then attempting to present them as new. However, from a brand perspective, it makes sense after the LVMH prize to reintroduce the brand given that it's now presenting to a much larger audience as this was their first slot on the Fashion Week time schedule, I believe. Plus, this allows for less costs ensued and less development time, something obviously very important to the couple that started the company for an announcement that they would soon make. They had just been scouted for the creative directorship role at Nina Ritchie. I haven't actually done a video on Nina Ritchie yet, but at this point, Nina Ritchie was a sleeping beauty, which is a brand with a powerful name, but that people don't remember too, too much about the original designer to be discerning with codes so that if it gets revived, the marketing team can rework history and frame new codes for the house as original and add a real sense of authenticity to the brand, which in reality is all marketing. This video isn't about Nina Ritchie, so I won't go into too much detail about this collection, which was their first full collection for the brand, or 2019, because much more importantly than their work at Nina Ritchie was the fact that this job effectively was able to fund the Botta house, easily helping them avoid the unfortunate common fact that these new fashion businesses are often being run at a loss. But 
I suppose they didn't know about their appointment confirmation until a little bit too late, because for Botta, they actually didn't show on the catwalk for their Autumn Winter 19 collection, instead going for this lookbook slash showroom situation. That, though, is a bit of a shame that they didn't have a show to capitalize on the incoming influx of attention from their appointment, was an interesting return to their serious themings. I again have to read into this collection as I couldn't find their notes, but from the imagery around and in the collection, like this vest made of a plastic bag and then their shots of the Caribbean on Instagram, I think they took their usual inspiration of Caribbean life, where both Rushimi and Lissy grew up, and turned it to critique the state that Europe allowed places like the Caribbean to fall into after they abandoned these countries without financial and technical resources after they gained independence leaving an enormous financial disparity between their oppressors and the Caribbean, which is still very evident today. But Vogue seemed to interpret this as the resourcefulness of refugees evidenced by these Botta in Paris sweaters, so I think either I'm wrong or it's just open to interpretation. The one area we do agree on, though, is the sense of humour found in this from the brand as they presented the inflatable dolphins with half smiles and half scowls, perhaps as a humorous manifestation of how they feel about this situation. Actually, from here, they simply don't share their show notes on inspiration to the public again, and so unfortunately, I can't provide further insight into this aspect of the brand that I personally had come to really look forward to, and being that it was such a huge signifier for the brand, is for the branding side of the company, a real shame. I'm sure that each collection from here does have this kind of serious tone addressed with humour, but because this information is not really possible to find online, it's probably in everyone's best interest that I simply allow you to interpret each collection from here forward. So with that being said, Spring Summer 20 was also presented in a lookbook, Autumn Winter 20 introduced their audience to bags, Spring Summer 21 returned to lookbooks yet again, and Autumn Winter 21 is where the brand next hits a promotional stride. The return to the catwalk since the pandemic is the first time since their V-File show in Spring Summer 17 that they would use an obvious gimmick on the catwalk. Obviously they'd used them through the photo shoots, but as an audience we're far more desensitized to strangely styled photography than we are to catwalk stunts, especially back in 2020, Spring Summer 2021, where they were more uncommon than they are now, especially in menswear. Gimmicks had become a part of the brand DNA, but with so few catwalks to their name, they avoided being labelled as gimmicky. It's just that, as a consequence of that, they didn't get the expected boost in press attention. You'll notice how I've been able to focus on their house codes and point of view much more than I've mentioned their gimmicks, and it's simply because by having so many lookbooks and also being in the product-led menswear category, it allowed the customer to look deeper and therefore understand the brand on a deeper level, something I'm not sure they would have been able to do to such a degree if they had exclusively shown in the catwalk. But now that they were back on the catwalk, their gimmicks were hard to ignore. From the drones in Autumn Winter 21, scuba suits and umbrella hats in Spring Summer 22, the chairs and heart cutout hats in Autumn Winter 22, Botta had become one of very few menswear brands that each season would get press, surpassing that which is usually achieved by menswear labels, especially of this size. We knew gimmicks worked for brands because of what they've been doing for Chanel. For menswear, this was pretty novel and they really reaped the benefits of this, winning the Andam Prize in 2022. But just to be clear, this doesn't mean that they were all gimmick and no substance. They'd been working on the production a lot in the background and had even started to work with Chanel directly with the upside down bags and with Maison Michel, which is Chanel's couture milliner, on these hats, which to be fair were for Nina Ritchie, but clearly, they had great manufacturing connections and were really using them to confirm Botta as a luxury product creator, not all hype and gimmicks. From here on, Botta really became the show to either see or see the details of when they became online with their Spring Summer 23 condom hands going relatively viral, as well as the ice bags from the same season, which both communicate their platform of saving the oceans. 
Which unfortunately brings me to the biggest qualm I have about Botta, the brand's perceived activism. Since the beginning of the brand, as we discussed, they've used multiple serious topics as the purpose of their collections. Over time, that's been narrowed down to a focus on saving the oceans, as we have also discussed as well. They're very vocal on social media, and even in their last Nina Ritchie collection in Spring Summer 22, it was all about the melting ice caps. But when they're still using materials with a lot of plastic, it brings into question the authenticity of their activism. If you look on their site now, you can actually see that most garments are made with poly something or elastane, which renders them unable to be recycled as clothing ends the clothes cycle loop that this kind of plastic is harnessed from. So actually, often these clothes, even if they're from recycled plastic, are more harmful than if the fibers were just remade into bottles. Bottles can be recycled over and over again, but clothing cannot. It can't even break down in a timely manner and usually just ends up filling our ever-growing landfills. I realize this isn't their responsibility. And at the end of the day, they are a business that has to turn a profit. And that these plastic materials both offer them a larger markup and may help them better materialize their creative vision, which can promote the importance of saving our oceans as a result, especially when their clothes aren't on the most expensive end of fashion. But considering they've pushed activism of the oceans as their main platform, I would just like to see it translated a little more into the actual product when they can afford to in the future, just so it feels more authentic. And in fairness, they have started using organic cottons in a few products, and so I hope it's upwards from here. So though I am complaining, I know that my expectation is a little unfair for a small business. I know logistics are not easy, and they're doing an awful lot better than most companies, which is very commendable. However, if they do ever watch this video and want to educate me better on the textiles that they use and want to tell me that I'm wrong, either in the comments or just privately on Instagram, I would be more than happy to be proved wrong because it's very clear that they are trying to do what they can. It's just I cannot lie that it is my biggest question mark about the Botta brand. But despite how I said that the gimmicks had kind of taken the place of activism a little, it is still an important code for the house. Continue both in the autumn winter 23 with the bicycle seat bags and the spring summer 24 that just showed. However, something I noticed as novel from the Spring 24 show is their seeming inspiration from the Botta archive, potentially for the first time. Namely, in the Spring-Summer 16 sequins on netting that are reminiscent of the embellishment on this jacket, and the Autumn-Winter 19 dolphin charms that are reminiscent of the voodoo-inspired charms in this collection. The environmentalism theme is also seemingly inspired by their past work of using netting, which again starts from their first collection, Spring Summer 16, which has now been used to materialize these garments. So I mean, they have done before, but this iteration just looks a very artful interpretation. Actually, in general, both the Autumn Winter 23 and the Spring Summer 24 collections showed beautifully made and interesting looking clothing, which realistically in the product-led menswear market is simply the most important thing for them to continue to satisfy their current consumer. It's just, I think for continued growth, I would like to see a few more core signifiers or products in the future just to expand on the caps that they have now. Especially if they were to come out with shoes, I personally think it could be a real hit for the brand. I do know though that they have released teaser shoe collaborations before and even used them in their catwalk shows like these ones from Reebok. But as far as I'm aware, none have gone into retail, likely just because of the obviously laborious and perhaps not very wear-resistant design. But there's clearly demand for their shoes, and either if they could make their own or just get a collab going, it may bring some further funding to the company that I would really enjoy seeing. The way I would sum up Botta to someone that's coming into the brand for the first time is that it's younger or more accessible Lueve. There is a space for it, sure, but I think a little bit more work needs to go into establishing the brand's point of view. They've gone through activism, kind of on and off, gimmicks on and off, even the color palette isn't always the most consistent outside of the bottom blue. They do use their Caribbean couture phrase a lot in promotional materials, but just in my opinion, it's a little tricky to see in the product unless it's literally printed on it, 
as is, as I mentioned before, their focus on saving the ocean, given all the plastic and fabric blends, which I didn't mention before, but any fabric that's blended is either very difficult to recycle or just straight up impossible to recycle too. So yeah, despite what I've said and the questions about validity that I have raised, Botta is a really interesting business. They make truly interesting products, which for menswear is the most important thing, and I enjoy that they don't shy away from bright, bold colours. However, to have longevity with the brand, we need that one thing to bring a customer back to each season. Otherwise, like Kiko Kostadinov, they will have to depend on just having a success each and every season, which is possible, but it's just not the easiest thing to do. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. Check out my beauty channel for videos like this one, but about beauty brands. And check out my Patreon for early access to content.